Hello everyone and welcome back to the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour just in time for our first move here on uh, day three of the prelims. Uh, I'm joined today by the one and only Alexandra Botez. I just got Keck W'd. I don't we just started the show. I don't I don't know why you guys are Keck W'ing. Uh, you should you have all three chats open, Levy. I, I yeah, I do. I do. But it was Hikaru's chat that was Keck W'ing me. Um, all right, I'm catching up to you, and I'm opening all of them as well. Yeah, this is... I, I'm going to make a, an effort today. I told Alexandra I would make an effort uh, to have all the chats open because probably uh, there is not a massive amount of crossover uh, with with the Botas Live community uh, because Alexandra has been pretty freaking successful in her collaborations with, like, a lot of different people. Like, that Uno thing was pretty crazy. I was, uh... I didn't know Uno could be that competitive. Like, that was... I. Yeah, Uno was pretty wild. Um, but it was actually almost more intimidating than chess with uh, Andrea standing behind me with her little bodyguard glasses. I Whose idea were the shades? I just thought it would be funny if we overdressed for Uno. But then people took us seriously, and then I felt a little bad. Well, pe people were, like, pretty dressed up. I mean, I, I like, I mean, people, like, it was going to be a prolonged period of time on camera. Oh, and you, your chat is saying that I have no audio. Um, uh, I'll fix your audio. I, I'm generally known as the chat relayer. Like, I will relay... Oh, whoa. The color of my overlay changed. That was... That was cool. Um... And it's, somehow chess.com turned on sounds again. Or maybe I'm just losing my mind, but I hear every time the pieces are being moved. Now it's good. Now it's good. Uh, Wesley and Aronian have already drawn, guys. So we've got our first draw of the day. We're going to have to update the standings. Uh, that was not unexpected. Was it unexpected? Well, Aronian's not even qualifying, which is kind of strange. Oh, but he's playing with black, so it kind of makes sense. Um, right. So also, for uh, people in my chat and in Levy's chat and in Hikaru's chat, since we have all of them, we're just watching today the finals of the preliminaries, right? Yeah. Uh, the final day of the preliminary round. This is uh, the strongest tournament so far in the Champions Chess Tour. Uh, and this one has a cool crypto component with uh, one of the major sponsors being this, uh, this betting spot um, and also FTX. So there's, uh, th there's, there's a lot of fun to be had. And if you've made it here for the 11th round, you get to see the El Clasico matchup, which is Hikaru versus Magnus Carlsen. Now, it should be noted. I'm going to start a conspiracy theory. Oh no, Levy. We did talk about this before. Levy observed something very weird about the games between Magnus and Hikaru. Should we give chat a second to guess and see who gets it first? Yes, although I believe uh, a poll was already conducted on the GMP Hikaru channel. <laughs> oh, okay, um, even better. In every round of the preliminary stage, not the, not the knockout, but the preliminary stage in every round, which is, I believe, six. It's been six rounds. Uh, Hikaru has had black. So Hikaru has had the black pieces in six straight games, which is a probability of 0.2% about. Um, now listen, with those odds, Hikaru might as well play lottery. So, uh, that's pretty... So, you know, and these drawings Or maybe are... with those odds, Magnus should be the one playing the lottery. That actually, that, that does... Yeah, that's probably a <laughs> Maybe Hikaru should, should stay away from the gambling games with these odds. Yes. Uh, oh, right. I forgot to multiply by 100 to make it a percentage. I apologize, chat. I, chat, we, we, you guys know the drill. You guys are a lot better than us at, at everything, math included. Um, all right. Let's go, let's go through the opening. So, obviously, no Berlin draw. Magnus goes for bishop c4. And um, Hikaru plays this very quick d5 on move at 6. Six. Because mm -hmm. normally you can play the pawn to d6, but okay, he goes for d5. Uh, have they moved their a pawns yet? Have they moved their a pawns yet? There it is. They okay. just moved a4 on move 11. 
Right. And why is it so important whether or not they've moved their A pawns yet? This this is just the the modern trend. So like in in all e4 e5 positions, uh, in the Italian or the Rui nowadays, like you can play a4 a5 generally, whenever. So I was curious, and there we go. I mean, it's kind of funny. Like you go back a move, it's like okay, what are you supposed to do? Finish your development. Mm -hmm. Super GMs now just move their a pawns and h pawns. That's just it's just how it goes. It's like a gentleman's agreement. See, and now Magnus is back to developing normally. He's playing Bishop b3. So, yeah, I mean, a4, a5, very symmetrical. Um, it seems like you always have to reply with a5 after a4, right? Yeah, otherwise, you're gonna, you, it's like getting pranked. You, you can't, it's like if you're playing a game and the person plays h4 on move one, like you have to play h5. Because otherwise, you're gonna, if you lose, I mean, there's no, there's no going back from losing to one h4 or one a4. So, play a4. You don't want this to be how the preliminary match goes. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, Alexandra, your voice just totally, like... What, uh, what just happened? It's, I, I was being told that my volume was a little bit too high, so I turned it down a notch. Is it okay now? It was good before. You can always just uh, turn down desktop audio in OBS. I can be tech support. Um, I have all of my stuff on a Go XLR, so it was oh. the fact that you were too quiet and you're already on Max, so it should be fine now. Is my voice sounding okay to you? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. I can also, I have a knob on my microphone if I need to turn it down. Uh, no, can you turn it up a little bit? Up. Is that better? Yes, we're good. We're good. Sorry, Levy. Okay. <laughs> fix, fix the tech support. Fix the tech support. Yeah, not... Not much has occurred. Um, Bishop on e3 is attacking this knight on... I mean, I... See, when I, when I see the bishop, I'm like, okay, is Magnus going to take this knight and damage the pawn structure? Or is giving away the... Okay, well, clearly Hikaru is not minding... King h8. Yeah, well, probably the idea is moving the bishop and f5, right? I mean, you, you just play king h8 to get out of the way of this bishop on b3 so you can put your f pawn forward. That's what I would... That's what I would imagine. Uh, logical move. Right. And, so... and it makes a lot of sense, too, since this is a very slow opening for Magnus. I mean, he doesn't have any of his pawns in his center. Obviously, he has no weaknesses as well, but it seems that both sides can really take their time here. Yeah, I don't... I don't, I don't know what Magnus even wants in this position. I, he can't push his deep on. Uh... Maybe he be well. He can't even play knight g three because the d three pawn is hanging. So, and like if I'm Hikaru, my next move is probably knight d five or bishop g six f five, continuing with that plan, or bishop g four f five, continuing with that plan. I I like the way this looks for black, but the problem is that the opponent is named Magnus Carlson. If it was like anybody else, I would. A bit more confident. But... You'd be you'd be very comfortable with your position. Yeah, the problem is that if I just look to the top left, it's 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 the guy, you know. I mean, this is like Ludwig's protege. I mean, this is no joke. Like we're well, guy... you know, I, I I do see what you mean here because the pawn on d three is very annoying to deal with. As you mentioned, right now, if the knight moves away, it's going to be under attack. It's unclear if you want to push to d four because then you're going to be dropping your knight on e4. So maybe he can start with something like h3 to take away the idea from bishop g4. But even then, it's not clear how he could develop. Maybe queen e2 and bringing one of the rooks to d1? Uh, queen e2 makes sense. Yeah, queen e2 and rook d1. h3 also makes sense. Um, Someone is pointing out that the computer's top line in chess.com events is rook e1, knight d5, bishop c1, which... Rook e1, knight d5, and bishop c1? Yeah, just like, don't let him take your bishop, I don't get it. Just, just bishop yeah, c1. I mean, the computers like to hang on to the bishops, but you know that when the best plan is retreating your bishop back to c1, it's one of those positions that is very uncomfortable to play with as white. And whenever I see positions like this, I always wonder, how far ahead do you think they prepared into this versus 
the position is already unfamiliar and unfamiliar i think magnus prefers for it to be unfamiliar obviously uh i think hikaru has actually shown some pretty nasty prep in some of these events uh going like 15 20 moves deep which as an aside i must say is extremely impressive because as I told you before we went live, every day I'm convincing myself I need to prepare for my Vegas tournament, and I have done <laughs> zero. And I'm when I say zero, I mean, I mean zero. I mean at this point, it's probably negative prep. So the fact that he can come prepared like 20 moves deep in some lines is just fascinating. Um, and then and I, go stream after, and then continue on to the next. Yeah, event. like because the thing is, he he wins like 80 80 percent of the title Tuesday he plays in, and he has to play those events without giving away too much prep because then he has to turn around and play these events, and he'll be like, yeah, I I play this line against, you know, uh, Jospum, this Peruvian grandmaster. I'm like, man, that's nuts because all these online games in the past year make it to the database. And I talked to Alexander Kostinyuk about this too. Title Tuesday games never made it to the database. And now they all make it to the database. Every single one. Uh, in this week in chess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through, Twi uh, through uh, yeah, exactly. Through Twix, which is not the candy bar. It's TWIC, guys. Right. And it's basically where all of the top players go to see all of the last games. And they keep updating this mega database of all of the chess games because then they can see how different opening theory is developing. So. That's actually a really fascinating part of chess that probably only very few people actually use. Yeah, it's... Um, so it used to be that you can have anonymous accounts when you played these, the, these chess.com events because of the past year and fair play and all this stuff. Like, they need to know who you are. Right. Uh, they need to. You don't always have to have it publicly on your profile, but uh, what's interesting... So I don't, know, I don't know if you realize this, but if... If a game makes it into the database through Title Tuesday and you're anonymous on chess.com, somehow like the database knows your account. That's awful. Yeah, so you just so... can't test out prep if you're playing in Title Tuesday, but yes. Title Tuesday is also an incredible opportunity because you need to be testing your prep against top talent. Yes. Ooh, exactly. So that's if you if you have a titled account and they know who you are, but it's not public, uh, sometimes if it makes it to the database it'll come up under your name, which Levy, is- I have kinda... an idea. Okay. Why don't the top GMs just give you their prep? You can test it out and they keep their anonymity. Aha. Uh -huh. And then suddenly there's gonna be like a, a Reddit thread, like, <laughs> hey, I noticed that Gotham is playing like all the trendy top lines in every like event he's playing. Uh, and then I'm going to also drop the percentage of the score. So down. then no one's going to look at the lines, which yeah. is even better because then, you know, these top players won't know what to prepare against because it looks like the lines are bad. Uh, well, I, yeah, exactly. Like it's, and, um, and this way you prepare for Vegas without procrastinating. Oh, uh -huh. fixed all the problems there, Levy. Oh, 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 staff is in chat, says you're not meant to play T... Oh, okay, I got... Oh, I see. So once you play in Title Tuesday, you're basically volunteering yourself for demasking. Okay, cool. Got it. Which is good, because in Title Tuesday, I've played, like, a lot of stupid openings. And now, when they go to prep, the, they're going to be like, Oh, look, in 2020, Gotham played all these stupid lines. And then they're, they're going to get confused and... Um, my plan was to show up to Vegas with a repertoire that I've never played in my life. So I've got three weeks to learn a bunch of brand new openings. Um, well, best of luck with that, Levy. And speaking of new openings, so I mean, I don't play this with the white side of the pieces, but now that Hikaru is preparing F5 after he moved his bishop back to G6, mm -hmm. Magnus I think so. is going to have to move his knight away. He's going to have to take care of D3. Probably the best attempt he can go for is something like knight c5 because at least if the knight is traded off he's putting pressure on e5 um but the, the thing is even after that it's not a very interesting opening i think i think magnus kind of wants hikaru to actually play the move f5 and i think hikaru uh himself wants to play the move f5 so we have a situation where both sides want the same thing which is probably uh pretty Pretty unbalanced then. I mean, if wait, if... so pause for a second. Both players you think here want to play f5. So is it a stylistic thing? Yeah, I think f5 weakens the black position slightly, and it kind of overcommits you to the center. Uh, but it well now you can't play f5 because bishop takes b6, right? Right. 
I, I think. Okay, computer, validate my claims. Yeah, bishop b6, and you can just lose your two bishops, but you get your you get your extra pawn on e5, and then this is badly damaged. Okay, yep. so knight g3 has prevented f5 temporarily, but what if Hikaru plays knight d7 and then f5? I like it, so he wants to get rid of the threat on the knight on b6 first. He's also defending e5, and he's really in no rush here. Is there anything he has to be careful about other than the threat of bishop takes b6? Not really, which is kind of the problem of Magnus's opening. He has this armada of soldiers on the third rank, but they can't... I mean, the knights aren't moving anywhere. The bishop is now without targets. Yeah, and Hikaru played... Is Magnus actually down to five minutes, guys? Or I see eight minutes on mine. Okay, and what about for Hikaru? I see 11.57. Okay, that's what I see. So my events page is just taking time away from oh interesting because i was able to watch it and oh no you're right it is an events it is an events my bad um they, all right they both have the same oh okay so okay oh all right let me let me refresh let's let's refresh let's see what's up here we'll do a mutual refresh and we can check if the times are similar mine is still over eight minutes for magnus and eleven fifty seven for hikaru hikaru's time i can confirm is exactly that but for me magnus has four minutes so Wait, does he still have four right now? Yeah, even after okay. refreshing. That well, is concerning, because mine has eight minutes, but that's okay. Let's average it out. Let's say he has six. He will probably make a move, uh, and it will give him, like, four minutes back, because that's generally what happens. I mean, someone needs to come along and code better either software or hardware so that we don't, like, we can transfer moves across interfaces uh more efficiently i mean how often does it happen that even live you have these you know magnetic boards that are relaying clocks or relaying moves and then they just don't work uh right. i and, don't know and this position is is interesting for me because i feel like a lot of times I don't like keeping the tension on the board, and I'd be very tempted to push d4 here as soon as possible. But then I look at, you know, better players like you or Grandmasters, and they always find yeah. sneaky other ideas or just slowly improving the position of their pieces. What would you consider here from the white side? Uh, d4. So you would also be <laughs> so you'd also be looking at d4 trying to push that pawn. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, uh... Like, I was joined yesterday by a f uh, former world champion, you know, uh, recently minted 2700. Uh, and, uh, I, like, I had to look up to them. And you, you do not need to uh, do the, the, the same thing. I mean, let's just, let's just be very clear. Uh, as I like to coin the term uh, washed up I am, uh, that very much applies. If I can push upon one square in the center, I mean, it looks optically pretty strong, so... I'm going to do it. I'm not one of these, like, I got to maneuver my pieces around and whatnot. Um, I don't understand why e4 is not just a very good move here for black. e4 followed by knight d2 and f5. Okay, computer seems to be coming around to this idea also. But I like e4, f5 by black. But then knight e2 to try to get to f4, mm -hmm. maybe. Bishop h5 to pin the knight, not let you move. That's actually what might happen. Knight e2 and then bishop h5, and then we have a game on our hands. Uh, but we'll see what Hikaru chooses to do. Right. And, I mean, so 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 far in the tournament, um, I, mean, I mean, Hikaru is leading. Everybody sees the standings. Uh, Carlson is having a little bit of a tougher event, but, I mean, he's only behind by one point, so that's not too big a deal. Do you think it changes um, his perception going into these games? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like if you're, I don't, I don't know what these guys are experiencing because they, if you interview them at the end of the day, they will all tell you the same thing. The most important thing is to just get into the top eight. That's what they're going to say. That will be the right. sentence. Um, right. If you start the final day a point out, like Nepo, I guess even Firuja and Dubov, they're, uh, they obviously want to win some games. The problem is that this level, if you want to win games, you need to go through... You're not just going to get a winning position. Like, you, you will need to take some serious risk. Uh, 
For some of the other guys that are like five and a half, six, I mean, no one's comfortable. Like, let's just be very clear. No one's comfortable. One loss and you might be very well booted, so. Nobody's comfortable. It sounds like such a pleasant event to be playing in. Nobody's safe. Nobody's comfortable. Everybody's going to have a hard time getting even one win. But that is what competitive chess is about. Yeah, well, that's good. That's that's why these these events were made. I mean, for example, last event, going into the final day, there was like four or five players that just absolutely had no chance. Uh, and and that's sort of the issue, is that they they you you want other players who who no one's heard of potentially like the first timers to come in and like you know do something crazy and like Alan Pichot, which I mean, chess people probably heard of him. He's an Argentinian prodigy and the top player, but for people who only follow the top, maybe this is their first time, right? Yeah. So like Pichot has had a a funny reputation. First of all, people are very offended at his participation. I mean, I mean, I have seen some crazy. I mean, it's gotten to the point where like eighty percent of some some of the Twitch chat believes that they could beat Pichot in a match. Um, I mean, Twitch chat thinks they can beat everyone at every game. Yeah, but like, you know, they There's see Pichot, they're like, they're excited. you know, and then you got, you got the people calming them down. Like, bro, like, come on, he would adopt you and your entire family. If you combine yes. your entire family ancestry's chess ability, like he would still beat you. <sighs> um, and then there's the people that are like, oh, like he's the underdog, you know, I'm rooting for him. But the thing is that if you had replaced Pichot, let's say in the beginning with a guy like Vidit, another 2700 you know top guy from india because because anand isn't playing these events mm. then before the event i would not know who the top eight would be i mean i would know parts of the top eight you can always kind of bet magnus ikaru mm -hmm. right but you don't know like you don't know if it's if a grishuk or a ding or a or a or a mamidyarov like who right there's 16 people you got to choose eight of them so in an event like this i mean I want Pichot, like, I would literally lose my mind if he made a, a push for the top eight. But before the event began, we kind of didn't know who of the other 15 players would, would make it. And we still don't. We've got, like, potentially 13 people who are trying to qualify for eight spots. So I like it. It's fun. And apparently D5 is a bad move. Apparently. Okay, so 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 let, let's catch up here. So Hikaru played F5, which is what we both expected. And then you were saying 92 looked interesting, maybe followed by bishop h5 or e4. Instead, this is where Magnus surprised us and played d5, and you said this is a bad move according to uh, Mr. Stockfish. Well, actually, I was expecting e4 followed by f5. I'm sort of surprised he played it right away. He just left the door mm -hmm. open. Oh, because if d e5 is f4 just a fork? Oh, that's funny. Oh, you just ignore the pawn, and there's just a fork. So, oh, 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 that's a problem. So now he undevelops his piece. So does Magnus. So they're both just setting up for the next game. That's actually very funny. Knight b8, bishop c1. Okay, so You're actually the first person I heard that expression from, setting up for the next game, and I really liked it, and I yoinked it. Oh, oh, that wasn't even, like, sarcasm? Oh. No, 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 I actually really liked it, because I heard this before when you were doing commentary, and I really liked uh, the yes. way it was expressed. I don't know who I... I stole it from someone. I, I'm not that original. Um... I don't actually know where I heard that. It, it reminds me of some like Eastern European coach making fun of you as he's analyzing your game. That's the vibe I got, so it stuck with me. Well, I remember I had a I had a, a a Soviet trainer at a chess camp I went to as a as a kid, and she used to make moves on the board, and she would say like, "Bishop C1, I hate this move," <laughs> like just yeah. like just I hate this move. <laughs> it, it just feels so personal, you know. <laughs> Yeah, they somehow found a way to get, to drill deep into your soul uh, in those chess camps. Um, okay, very simple move here from Hikaru. Just bishop d6, guard your center pawn. I like this position. I mean, th this structure, I think, is good for black. Because you kind of have mobility of pawns, kind of whenever you... Bishop d6, knight a6, knight c5. No, I really like this. I like this for uh, for black. I wish you can play bishop d6 and just adjourn the game. And Go study it like you used to. As people saw in Queen's Gambit and what they used to do in classical chess, they actually would be able to pause the game, but then they had time to analyze it, which is probably why there was so much Russian supremacy, because they had way more grandmasters to train with, right? Yeah, it was like the, the final scene. I'm sorry yeah. if I'm spoiling, but if you haven't oh, seen no, the show yet... Oh, no, we are spoiling. Yet, if they uh, haven't seen it, they're not going to watch it. It's too late. 
all the hype is not. I'm not gonna lie, like I've I've spoken to a few people in the past few weeks who have brought up because they know K okay, me, chess, they're like, hey, Queen's Gambit. I'm like, have you seen it? They're like, nah. I'm like, what do you like it's not as cool, it's not as edgy as saying I haven't seen Game of Thrones. For example, like if you haven't seen the Queen's Gambit, you just have bad taste. Um, there's not, there's nothing that. Okay, hang on a second. So F four does seem a little bit weird, just because as you yeah. were saying, if he kept attention, it is really hard to play from Magnus's point of view. And every time you create a pawn push, you also weaken some of the squares. In this situation, the light square. So now Magnus goes right back with his knight onto E four. Yeah, I'm I'm perplexed uh, why you would commit and allow him to get the square. Uh, okay, th this makes sense. Hikaru wants to play bishop takes on e4 and then knight c5. But I I don't like the overcommitting of the pawn structure. The position's still probably completely fine. I just really like the fact that the pawns were not letting white move forward yeah because see like now what i mean just like now what do you do and what? and the other thing is that now if the knight is ever traded off from e4 the e5 pawn is a target and it's stuck um can't have any other pawn protecting it even though it's not a proper backwards pawn it is going to be a target but i guess the d5 pawn is also overextended it just seems like now they both have chances whereas before it was slightly easier to play for hikaru Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not going to lie. The more I look at this, the more I completely don't understand the decision. Uh, I Maybe he just... I don't know. Maybe he was going to take on e4. Like, maybe here, he was going to take on e4 and then let the rook come forward and mm -hmm. then play knight a6 to try to go knight c5. So at least there's a rook to hit. But now, if he takes on e4... I mean, Magnus probably can take with a rook, for the record, but, okay, he can take with a bishop and... Yeah, man, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what he saw there. Uh, Cause like the computer recommendation is to play queen e8, which God bless you if you play that move. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> if he card plays queen e8 here, I uh, computer computer recommendations always just make me feel so out of everything. Yeah, I. I and then you like, what the hell is the idea of this move? I think it's to go bishop f5 and queen g6. I think it's to build like, on this diagonal, which actually doesn't look half bad. Bishop f5 and queen, where did you say? g6, so oh, he plays rook e8. Man, I'm starting to like this less and less. I mean, you just look so cramped here. He does look cramped, but at the same time, so is Magnus, right? I mean, his bishop on c1 is completely blocked off. Um, he's B3? not going to be able to develop his rook. I guess he could go b3 and, and bishop b2 and point towards e5, but as soon as he pushes c5, then b4 and c5 are permanently weak. Yeah, I... You know, we, the, the problem is we have, the, we have this curse of the eval bar, which is just calmly hovering around like plus 0.3 I, and telling I everybody I don't to like chill. the eval bar. It tells you everything too easily, you know? But I, I understand. I mean, the, like... like the bar. I, I would have not expected F4. Uh, still, I, I gotta... Ultimately, we'll see what happens today. Like, hopefully, you know, Hikaru, like, makes it into the top eight. He's, you know, he's in a chatty mood, whatever the result of this game is. But, man, I mean, one pawn push, like... And also, the, the, the worst part is, you gotta start the day with Magnus. I guess there's two ways of looking at it. Wait, what's wrong with starting the day with, with Magnus? Like, it, it, well, it might set your tone for the rest of the day. Ah, okay. Uh, that's the, that's the part. You get Magnus in like the penultimate round. You're already qualifying. You you do your draw. You know. Yeah, you need Magnus in in, in the third round when he's already eaten the noodles. He's got the food coma. Right now, you're getting what what time? Where is Magnus right now? Where, what is it like? Five p.m. Four p.m. I mean, he's not eating yet, so he's still fresh. Probably coming off the 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 afternoon nap. Like this is the worst time you, but you can. But so get. is Hikaru. Totally fresh, right? It's eight in the morning. I mean, I don't know. I... Yeah, that's true. Maybe he needed to wake up a little bit. I mean, time zones are very interesting because for chess players at the highest level, any small inaccuracy makes a difference. So even being a little bit more tired can actually change things. So I do see your point now, Levy. At first, I thought, what the heck? 
And now I, I see where you're coming from. Also, I just wouldn't play Magnus like on any time zone. So I, you know, it's it's the same way people request me to play matches against certain GMs, and I'm just like, what? I like to play matches. I have chances of winning. Mm. Um, which is why when Alexandra offers an odds match, I'm like, okay, okay, they got a chance. By the way, what odds are we talking? Not oh yeah, we're... I thought an odds match would be fun. Um, if so, if you're playing against me and Andrea, maybe it could be something like. <laughs> One minute versus three. I get the three, right? Yeah, of course. Because you guys have like, if you combine your elo, it's. No, if, uh, our combined elo we've tested it. It's about twenty three hundred. Okay. So it's not very high. So one to three is probably fair. What were the odds when you played Eric Rosen? I don't remember. Um, I'm pretty sure he adopted us with one and a half to three. It was a really bad match, though. So what you're saying is I'm significantly stronger than him and I need 33% time reduction in this match. That's what I'm hearing. I mean, bullet, uh, do, do you think one minute is enough? Um, I, I think if I ask for lower, then it's insulting to you because then I'm saying I can beat you with less time. I mean, I'm, I don't, it, it's not insulting because we know you're a better player and it's also me and Andrea discussing, which makes it slower. So do you think you could do 30 seconds to three minutes? Dude, what, dude, I just lost half my time. <laughs> well, you're way better than Eric Rosen and Andrea and I spend half of the time <laughs> arguing. Hold on, wait, wait, can we, wait, can we say, uh, you cut out. Could you repeat that? I didn't. 30 seconds to three minutes. Final no, no, off. No, no, that I heard. Gotham. What'd you say? I, I couldn't hear the, the part after that. I, I don't. I, 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 oh, so let's look back at the game. We have Bishop A3 being played here. Magnus is finally getting his bishops out. Seems like he's not in a noodle coma. Um, um, by the way, everything we said was going to happen happened. And like, what? This is just getting... This is getting worse and worse. And this all started when that knight got onto E4. And like, D6. Magnus... Just, yeah, just D6. I mean, It just looks so good here. That was his overextended pawn. And now he's opening up his entire position. And then it's going to be Hikaru who overextended his pawns on the king side. And E5 is going to be a bit more weak. And now his knights are also on the side of the board. Yeah, there was a... Actually, I, I, okay. Well, C6 is trying to play knight D5 and trying to basically say, okay, at some point I will cut off your circle... Circulation, not circulation, but circulation. I will cut off the circulation to this the pawn. Circulation, okay. And I, uh, yeah. Sometimes I just can't speak the language I've spoken for twenty years. Yeah, you're doing great, Levy. You're doing great. Um, knight d5. I that it's... is a good attempt because if he could somehow end up winning the pawn on d6, he'd be better. But it's just too protected by the knight on e4, the bishop on a3. The rooks can come to d1 and kick the knight out with c4. Yeah, rook a d1. I mean, the final piece is coming. And I mean, a, long, a, a while back, you said queen e2, rook d1. And back then, the pawn was on d3. So certainly, the pawn on d6 would enjoy being supported by the rook on d1. It all went downhill after the pawn went to f4. And I, and I just, I really wonder what small detail Hikaru missed in the position. Maybe he didn't like something on, on move... 17 he didn't like that if he played bishop d6 or played it slow he thought there was something for white but it just looks really nice to have these pawns here do you think know. he was maybe afraid of knight g5 eventually I, I, eventually like knight g5 threatening knight yeah. e6 i mean you gotta yeah. go here I, I don't I, I don't know or really. knight h or no knight, knight h4 is a free knight so obviously not that but yeah knight g5 looks a little bit intimidating yeah uh Mamidyarov has defeated the Argentinian pride, uh, Alan Pichot. I, I called him the pride of Argentina in my recent recap, and a lot of people were mauling because they were like, somewhere Lionel Messi is crying. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about him. Um, but like chess, chess pride. He's the chess pride of Argentina. So. Yeah, of course. That's, that's very fair. Um, I think I, I had him looked up earlier. And, uh, yeah, he broke the records for the youngest to achieve FM, IM, and GM in Argentina. So he really is the cream of the crop for Argentinian chess. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Uh, yeah, and there, there's B4. That's the thing when you play these super GMs. Like, they have everything controlled on all sides of the board, and then they just flick in, like, a move like B4. 
blocking in their own bishop, but it's so strong because they're threatening b5, and your knight just has to retreat back to prison. And that yeah. has been the theme of this game. All of the pieces have been, you know, flirting with uh, the back rank, just going back. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like Hikaru is getting the shorter end of the stick. Yeah, I. Uh... Man, this is one of those games that if you're playing Blitz, you snap off a couple more moves, you resign, and you click rematch, and you just try to... Forget to get... about it, yeah. But yeah, the, pro the problem is that it's, you know, it's the first of four. The good thing is that uh, when we look at the standings, I mean, none other than Nakamura is, is in first place. Now, there is a four-way tie, so I have no idea what the tiebreak system is. This would be Hikaru's first loss. Um... And obviously, we know that when you tie with a group of people, it's the head-to-head -head round robin score, and then ultimately, it's the amount of wins you have. I think Hikoro has four wins, which is not bad. If you have six and a half out of ten, four wins, no. Is it four wins and three wins, seven draws? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's three wins and seven draws. So three wins and seven draws. Um, and. Uh, I mean, he is obviously having a good start to it. Um, he did end up playing Magnus with the black side of the pieces again, and we know that it is just generally very difficult to play Magnus. He had a really strong opening, and he basically made one mistake, and then Magnus, in his you know usual world champion fashion, just that's all he needed. Okay, but B5... B5, I guess... Well, Magnus wants C takes B5, and then I think he, he wants to take with a queen, actually. Um, computer just vehemently disagrees with me. But I was going to say, if you trade the queens... Mm -hmm. I mean, black just has no moves. But... Okay, he took with the pawn. He took, he took with the pawn, yeah, and, and now knight C, knight C5. I, I mean, you just you cannot actually play knight B8. Like, there, there's... Ugh, knight C5, I mean, take, 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 D7... Uh, right, you can just trade off all of the minor pieces and then start pushing pushing the pawn. This is... This what? is tough, because he has nowhere to move his knights. His knight on d7 is stuck. His knight on b8 has no square to move to unless he wants to drop a knight for free. Yeah, and I mean, are you really going to play knight f8? I mean, d7 is probably even winning there, even though it can be taken. Like, I'm sure that... Just sacrificing the pawn and lining up the bishops is, is, is perfectly good for... I, I don't think Magnus will do it. Is that what happened? Did Knight F8 get played? Yeah, Knight F8 just got played. Yeah, like... <sighs> okay, when, you're th when it's this bad and there's not that much time on the clock, uh, generally rule of thumb is just to keep as many pieces on the board as possible. Like, the only reason that this is game over is because it's, it's this level of play. If this is a game... If this is a sub-battle? I mean, Black will win 40% of the time. So... Keep as well, many pieces on the board as possible. Black will win 70% of the time, you know what? Yeah, like, yeah I mean, yeah, for sure. At most levels, this is, this is not still a very complicated game. I mean, I, it is also really hard to continue playing in these games where you're slowly being grinded out, but you have to try. Queen d8, I mean, he, he's, he's moving quickly. He's keeping some pressure on the pawn, defending his bishop. Yeah, Makes and... sense as far as attempts go. Magnus, of course, finds the, the best way forward, which is to reroute the knight that is standing gloriously in the center. To Rook a different... A2. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you're seeing the top move recommendation, but the computer wants... I mean, I think queen c4 is going to get played. That seems much more natural, but it wants knight e7. Yeah, and he does play queen c4. Mm -hmm. um, knight e7. Oh my god, wait, it's knight e7 is still a threat because queen g8 is checkmate. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he's going to have to take, oh my gosh, 97. And then even if the bishop takes pawn takes, you're attacking the queen with the rook, with the pawn, with the knight. It's just, oh, it's game over. Yeah, Holy yeah, smokes. Gotta... This is really pretty, actually. This all started because of f4. Like, ah, man, you just want to just bring the pawn back. This is, this game is actually a really... It's it's just instructive. Are we like, gonna see it on one of your YouTube videos, Levy? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, we'll we'll see. It's 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 round one. Um, you know, I, as I as I told Alexandra uh, prior to the show, uh, chess fans, you know, we we love hot takes. Uh, well, I mean, not necessarily myself, but you know, I've made I've been, I made a couple of recaps, and I just 
There's been a lot Remind of Remind us about what happened with Indonesia Levy. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, we I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Um my PR spokesperson told me not to talk about that anymore. Um but uh you know, like there's been a lot of really insane games and I there's just I haven't shown a Hikaru game yet. So obviously I got some comments like are you and Hikaru beefing? Like yes, I'm on his channel every day covering his games cuz we're beefing. That's Well, I know you're beefing. Just admit it, Levy. We're, okay. we're beefing. I just said we're beefing. <laughs> like, I, well, yeah, it's, it's really bad beef. And, like, he doesn't even know that I'm here, guys. Uh, nobody tell him. Also, um, I don't know why, but throughout the broadcast, I'm getting more and more white. Eventually, I'm just going to disappear into the background. Oh, I didn't even notice. Wow. I, uh, I have, like, 20 windows open, so I just kind of leave Zoom in the background and hope it, like, functions. Uh, yeah, no, I, no, I, yeah, I, it's... I checked it because I saw in the chat. Um, but that's okay. Um, so, Grishuk beats Svidler. What does that mean for the standings? Did we update Grishuk's score? I think we did. Yeah, Grishuk now has four points. Um, people are saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just move uh, these dudes to a uh, small board as we see what happens in this game. People are saying that the Dubois Valley Reza game was nuts. So, it was a King's Indian defense. I'm going to open it as well i'm not gonna focus too much on the opening uh, what move are you at uh, ju just just the current position i mean ali Reza is like literally checkmating oh well not anymore but he's got bishop and knight for a rook versus dubov uh and uh he's just winning this is this game is big this is actually a, this is a massive game for the standings because they have the same score so they do have the same score but it, it i mean they, they do have chances to catch up if they have a really Good event today. Uh, wow, the computer did not like Queen C2. No, Dubov was like, was just was just doing very, oh, look at this move, knight e5. Oh, yeah, that, on move 32, Ali Reza, the only move in the position, which gives oh, advantage. Oh, beautiful. Just, it's an impossible looking move, and if you take it, oh my god, Queen F3 is just, oh my god. That was oh actually god. very beautiful. And bishop e5 is a mate threat. Yo, knight e5, queen f3 is like some... That's, that's like... That's some puzzle rush. A quiet move. And because no one can guard the e5 square... Damn, Ali Reza. Now he's just completely winning. Knight e5, queen f3 is... Gross. That yeah. is gross. I'm, I'm, I'm putting it back in. Uh, people are saying go Hikaru. Like I assume that means go to Hikaru's game, or or do people just say this because they miss seeing his game? I guess he's he he he's defending and he's tr he's trying to hold. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that Magnus's king is safe. Like you somehow need a rook to teleport to G two, which which probably is not going to happen. And he's just beating his friend. Sad. Um. Wait, Anish is beating his friend sad? Why is it sad? Well, he's... I mean, Anish and Timur, good friends, obviously, and it's sad when one of them has to lose. Oh. No, that, that, that's fair, that's fair. But, I, I mean, even when you play your, your friend over the board, I feel like people go back to professionals. Yes. Definitely fair. Timur resigned because he's in check. He cannot protect his knight if he plays rook d6. Uh, that actually stops nothing because king takes horse. And Bishop mm -hmm. is protecting the rook. So Anish wins. Big win for Anish. Yep. Um, that this is that, that it's good. I'm trying to figure out what that means for the standings. That means that Hikaru and Rajab have both stay up, which I suppose is. Bad. I actually don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad. Whoa! This is the first time in the Magnus Hikaru game that the computer is giving uh, Hikaru a little breathing breathing room, and I'm just gonna check what the line says. The line says if Hikaru plays Queen F5 here, he's almost you know he's having some holding chances. Is the Queen trapped? Rook D7. Like the Queen has to get out, and then I mean, what? he can go back to A2. Or B3. Yo, find Queen F5, B4. man. That'll, that, that'll be... Let's put Dubov and Ferruja on small board. Um, Queen F... Oh, listen, Queen F5 is not a crazy move. Yeah, and he, he played it. Okay. Plays okay. It. Oh, and the computer changed his mind. <laughs> the computer's like, actually, it's not that good. 
Ah, uh, well, do you know what the computer, the computer, oh my god, the rook is stuck. If rook d1, just queen h3. Magnus either has to repeat moves or find queen f5, rook d5, and you can't take it because you would lose your queen. Yeah, so now Magnus has, rook d5 is the only way to play for a win. Okay, that, oh my god, knight 8d7, and black has a chance to be better. And oh, and he pushes, and he pushes. Yeah, I mean, chess is a hard game. I mean, they don't have the computer, and Hikaru knows that he's been losing for... Oh, of course. The, the, the mentality when you're losing and you're playing against the world champion, you might not even realize that this is a chance when you'd be able to hold a position. Yeah, knight, knight d7 is, is crazy. I mean, okay, it's still not over. Rook d5 is the only move again, and then you just go back to h3 and push your pawn and checkmate Magnus, so that's pretty nice. This is actually a very scary position for both to play. I guess it's because he has rook h5 at the end or queen h5 to, to go but protect. Okay, h7 probably... is defended. Man, queen... Okay, I don't know about queen c8. I mean, I would have just played queen h3, and if I lose, I lose, but at least my queen... You're like, is he gonna go e3, dude? Like, what is he gonna do here? Go queen h3? Queen h3 back? But then why didn't he play it right away? Uh, oh, d7. Ah! Uh, ah, uh, ow. Oh, and now just take on e3, apparently. If you just take on e3. Take, take on, on e3. e3, take on e3, and then just move your rook away from the threat, and... Uh... What? Oh? E2? <laughs> 95! 95 and knight of 3! Like, what is going on? Well, I mean, he has, I think he has to try knight e5 here. He has to continue for the attack. And there's nothing else. So now Magnus basically needs to sack his rook and then uh -huh. get the pawn on e2. Yo, Magnus is up nothing. He has no material advantage anymore. Or I, I, I don't know if Math I, he, he might have with all the. Yo, this is this is this is not. So Magnus stops Queen h3 by playing mm -hmm. King g2. Um, wait, but like Rook f8 and Bishop c7. Yo, who's playing this for a win now? What just happened? So, white's king, way more exposed here. Um, black's piece is way more passive. Could be anybody's game now. Wait, so can he not take on e2? Well, I th that's what I'm saying. I think Hikaru has to react now. I think he has to play rook d7 or rook f8 and take the knight. Right. Because if he takes the knight now... Uh... BC7 attacks the rook, so that's probably no good. And there's like back rank problems, but even bishop c7, I don't necessarily see. Yeah, he plays rook f8, so queen e7 probably. Okay, queen e7 attacking the bishop, putting extra pressure on the pawn on e2 makes sense. What else could he consider? Queen h5, not really. Oh, they drew. Oh, he played rook f8 and offered a draw. Or I don't. I... <laughs> They drew. They're like, ah, oh, we're done with this game. That's enough of chess for today. Wow. That's a big hold. I mean, that is... Yeah. Well, the prophecy fulfills itself. Magnus calls Hikaru the most annoying player. And, uh, I mean, he, co he plays cocoon defense. I mean, literally, that's what... If you go back, like, eight... Hikaru just... Look, look, at, his, look at his position on move... I, I can't see, because my... What move? What, what, what move is this? After after knight d5, when Magnus played knight d5, I mean, he's got five of seven pieces on the final rank. And Hang on, I'm backing it up. Okay. He's yep. Got yep. Every piece on the back rank, basically, and just that is a big hold. Wow, he hit the sack. Yeah, he was also down in exchange, but the opening of the king was was big enough. Yeah, Magnus will definitely be frustrated. Um. And uh, he plays this rook d2. There was a moment instead of e4, the computer was trying to say knight 8 d7. This is move 43. Just go knight d7 and vibe. And just hold the position. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're bringing in an inactive piece. You're defending on e5. You're looking towards c5. Uh, but e4 in time pressure... Uh, with his idea was apparently, you know, tricky enough that Magnus did struggle with it. Yeah, after, wow. G after G7, I just straight up thought the game was over. I mean, I, I, I was like, okay, he has to sacrifice. And then if takes, takes, 
what did he miss? Rook d3, e2, what the king comes? Oh, the king, yeah, that's, that's, that's very... On move 47, uh, if he had taken on e3 and just stayed very patient for one move, the knight and the rook aren't going anywhere. That's very hard to see. Especially with, I don't, I don't know how much time they had, but yeah, that's a, that's a big Yeah, move. they're really, really low on time. Um, and I guess if he would have moved his rook to d3 and e2 coming in to try to promote, then, I mean, king f2 looks a little risky. Yeah, rook e3 also works here. Uh, check out MVL versus uh, Nepo. All right. Big end game here. MVL gets That's the win. why you study how to checkmate with a knight and a bishop. Wow. Yep. Um, MVL, shockingly... How did we even get here? Sorry, he, go ahead. I was going to say, shockingly knows how to do it. Uh, I mean... Ah, yeah, th this is... Uh, this is what I figured. It was knight, bishop, and pawn versus rook. I once had this. Uh, I was the losing side. Um, oh. And I... I tested my opponent for like the first 10 moves of the checkmate, and then they knew how to do it, so... But you resigned? I, yeah, I resigned. It's like, maybe they don't know how to do it. My opponent was like 2480, so probably should not have assumed such things. Probably knows how to check me with a knight and a bishop. Uh, what other results? So, MVL beats Nepo, Grishuk beats Fiddler, Ali Reza beats Dubov. Giri with a win are our standings final. So, we have 7-7-7, seven, 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 which is just iconic. Mm -hmm. Um... Three six and a halves, three sixes. We got Swidler on the on the big cusp of a victory, and Aronian and Ferugia with a win get in. This is crazy. This is Yo, if Nepo wins two games in a row, he's like there, okay? So the other I, I don't know I don't know about Grishuk and Dubov though. I I think their chances might be done. Two points out with four rounds to go. And I, uh what about your, the most controversial person here, Alan? How do you pronounce his last name again? So I always said Picho, but uh, I've Picho. started saying the T, so Pichot. 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 Okay, there we go. Well, okay, so it is going to be very close, but this is what we like to see in the preliminaries. Everybody fighting for those top eight spots. Yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be a very fun final day. I have no idea. The birds outside of my window are also excited. They just chirp. that's cute. They're they're finally waking up. You know. No, um, the birds here wake up at five and they don't go to sleep until like six p.m. It's they just they have no job. They just stand in the tree and scream for twelve hours. It's really frustrating. Um, but that's what you. I mean, you know, I'm sure you have seen videos. Oh, you had the experience of living in this wonderful city. I'm sure you saw rats. Oh, I saw rats and cockroaches, all of the fun stuff in New York. Yeah, we have a we have a great uh great amount of wildlife here. Really beautiful city. Um Well it's nice to have, you know, a little bit of animals around. Yeah, I've got birds on both sides uh of my of my apartment. That's the loudest I've ever heard them in the backyard, so they're quite excited for this preliminary stage. All the games are done, so the next round will start in seven minutes. Uh, I'm going to put the show on break and just be right back. I don't know if, if you're going to keep... No, perfect, because I was going to run to the bathroom, too. Okay. I don't know if you have a yeah. be right back screen, but uh, uh, I will put my show on I will. I then. will put mine on BR back as well, then. Guys, I'm going to go to the bathroom, and, and I'll, I'll catch you soon, then, Levy. Okay. We'll see you all for the start of round two.